So in Romans 8, 5, I think I have it up there. Yeah. It says here, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. Their end, then in Philippians 3, 19 says, their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and their glory, they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. So Colossians 3, 2 says, we have to set our mind on things above, not on things that are on earth. So the Holy Spirit is, what he's saying to us today, what he's been saying to me is, let's reset things. You may have had, you know, disappointments. You may have had delay, postponement, whatever it is. We have to hit that reset button because God has called us to be active Christians. He's called us to be Christians that are passionate, Christians that are praying. What could be some of the hindrances that would prevent that? Well, passivity, unbelief, where, you know, you, you've just been discouraged or your heart's been hurt. Right? I mean, no one here has ever been hurt by anybody, right? You know, you get hurt with, over situations. You've been disappointed. But, you know, God knew all that was going to happen. And so it's up to us then to say, you know what? I'm pressing on. I'm going to complete this race. I'm going to cut those things off. I'm going to choose to forgive the individual. I'm going to choose to forgive whomever. Forgive yourself. But we have to move on. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to break through because he's a holy God. And, and, you know, we are believing God for the glory. The glory is his presence, a rich presence. And it comes with all of us uniting in faith, trusting the Lord, just looking up to God and saying, look, I don't know how you're going to do this thing, but I trust you. Lord, I know you love me. Lord, I know that you have purpose and plans and destiny for my life. Lord, I know that you're, you're desiring breakthrough in my life. That's what he wants. He doesn't want us to be, in, in, you know, withdrawn. And he wants us to believe him for everything he has. So I wrote here, what do you expect? And our emotions, your immediate response will tell you what your mindset is. And if it's that, like, well, you know, I don't know, Lord. I, I don't even know if I believe you. Well, that's okay because we have to be honest with where we're at. So let's, let's check all that. I mean, you know, God wants us to move forward and you hear that. So what are you expecting? What is your mind set upon? If your mind is constantly set on what's not happening, well, that's going to hinder you. It's going to hinder me. What, what are you, what's your mind set on? You may have been hurt in church. You may have been hurt in your family life, on your job. What is your mind set on? How are you going to get out of that place? How are you going to move forward in that? What are you going to do? Well, we worship. We read the word. But the most important thing is, is God, I surrender to you, and I want to hear your voice, and I want to know what you have in store for me. We are his sheep and we hear his voice. I can't express enough that we have to lay aside the weight that's trying to hold us down. We have to, that be setting, whatever it is that could be holding us back, we just lay it down. Because, you know, the most important thing to me is that God loves each and every one of us. He knows where we're at. He knows what's gone on in our life. He's not sick of us. You know, thank God. He loves us. And he's always there. There are consequences to sin. Don't get me wrong. But, but just like in any job, like if we disobey the law, there are consequences. If I'm going to speed, I will get a ticket. And I might add, I haven't gotten a ticket in a while. And so, um, you know, you don't realize sometimes that you're, you're speeding and you're, you're going over the speed limit. And then when the cops come and pull you over and your husband just drives by and waves at you, you know, you realize <laughs> that... You know, I have to pay attention, but it's no different. We have to pay attention. We have to pay attention. It's very easy to speed, isn't it? It really is. I'm telling you. And then when you have someone driving in front of you that's so slow, but, but that's, that's the angel of the Lord trying to protect me to do the speed limit. But I, but I am. I'm doing the speed limit now. But, um, but. You know, it's hard, but it's the same thing spiritually. Isn't it easy to go ahead of the Lord? Isn't it easy to get off track? So, you know, that's the thing. It's like, Lord, and, and I, I was in worship in Texas, and I, and I may have shared this last week, I don't remember, but I saw, I saw these five angels, and they were standing around in a circle, and they were all facing outward, and they had the long silver trumpet, and they were blowing the trumpet, and they were saying, 
pay attention. Pay attention. They said it several times, and then I heard the scripture about how joyful, I always forget, I knew it then when, it, when I heard it, but how, how beautiful is the sound of joy, or when you release that joyful sound. But he was saying, pay attention. Pay attention. It's so easy to get in that groove of what we've known, of what's been so familiar to us that we keep on going, we keep on going, and we don't take time to change and say, all right, Lord, what are you saying about this season? What, what is it? You know, Habakkuk says, write your vision down. What vision are you writing for you in this season that you would like to see, that you would like change? You know, you have to have a vision plan because then you're shooting at nothing. You need a bullseye. What's your bullseye that you want to hit? That where you want change and transformation in your life, we have to plan it too. It's not just all, oh, well, it'll just happen. No, it won't just happen. We have to plan for that. We have to have purpose in our heart for that. So I want to encourage you today that God is there for you. God is looking to help us. He's, he's looking, you know, the, one of the main things is lay aside, if you are struggling in that area of any kind of passivity in your mindset regarding promises of the Lord. I know I had to do it. I had to lay it aside. I didn't even realize I had them. Like, I didn't know I was speeding. I had to lay it aside. And in Hebrews chapter 12, I don't know if that's on the handout. Oh, it is. Uh, in 12 and 14, it says, so... Be made strong even in your weakness by lifting up your tired hands in prayer and worship. Strengthen your weak knees, for as you keep walking forward on God's path, all your stumbling ways will be divinely healed. In every relationship, be swift to choose peace over competition and run swiftly towards holiness, for those who are not holy will not see the Lord." I love this. Lift your tired hands even when you don't feel like it. There's a sacrifice of praise. Lift your hands before the Lord. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. And, and you know, be, be intentional about forgiving. Be intentional about asking the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews that it's the, it's the root of bitterness that will keep you bound, that will keep me bound. Um, ask the Holy Spirit to show you where you've been complacent in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit, are, am I walking in any kind of forgiveness? Or, or, or I'm just in a place, Lord, you know what? I don't want to be set up for disappointment, so I'm playing it safe, and I'm not going to put myself out there. The Lord is resetting us today. He's saying, just, just grab hold of me and let me help you. Let me break you out of your mindsets that can keep you, you know, from moving forward. I'm, you know, he wants us to keep on moving. He wants us to see change. He wants us to experience it. And he wants the joy of the Lord to be a strength in us, not murmur, not complain. He wants the joy. What, anyway, let me ask you something. Has our murmuring or complaining changed everything, anything other than get you more agita? We have to just say, Lord, I'm going for it and I'm going to enjoy life. You know, I'm going to celebrate. I'm not going to just keep looking at what's not happened. That's Satan's reality. It's not mine. It's not God's reality for us. So I want to encourage you today, enjoy life. Break out of passivity. Ask Holy Spirit, is there anything in my heart where even if it, you know, it's towards yourself, if there's any kind of negativity, if there's any kind of bitterness you're holding on to, is there unforgiveness? Is there sin? Are you being lazy? So I'm not praying. I don't feel like it. Well, I don't feel like it either, but, but we do it, you know, just pray. Go for a walk outside, enjoy nature, pray, sing to the Lord. His delays are not his denials. Remember what I started and I started out with in Ezekiel 12, the postponement and the delays are over. 